Hi, this is Attila16. It's been a while, and uh, this is actually the first guide I'm doing for the game Steel Division Normandy 44, which is a game by uh, Eugene, a developer of Wargame. So you might know me from there, and uh, if you do, well, welcome back on my videos. And uh, if you did not, well, you can always look at Wargame, and the guys I did uh, were great, in my own opinion, of course. Um, this is uh, a series of guides which I'm starting now today. Uh, the game is not out yet, so everything I'm saying in this guide might change because the game the game uh, is in work in progress. So, uh, but I think uh, Eugene did a pretty good job at making it clear how the game will work, and I think well they will address uh, any imbalance uh, over time uh, I think the logic of it is pretty well established so what we'll do today is uh, I will show you the battle group guide and uh, then I will show you how to use it in uh, a round so let's start this so battle group uh, and I will cover uh, armored division for this video so this is a deck I created. Actually, I'm saying deck, but I should say battle group. Um, and the way this game works is you actually have uh, multiple waves and um, three waves, the a, wave A, B, and C. And you need to uh, anticipate the kind of troop that you'll bring for each wave. So uh, there's a kind of trade-off for whatever you bring and uh, this will play out uh, differently uh, depending if you want to start strong or start weak, occupy the territory quickly or just wait later on when you have better units or more uh, units. And this is really an interesting way to do things. And uh, as a result, I actually did this deck, which uh, I mostly tested against the AI because the game just came out. And uh, this makes sense to me. I hope it will to you. So let's uh, explain a bit more what this is. So here you actually have all the available units. Some of them are in my list here. And uh, what's interesting about the way this game works is that you have the A wave over here and you have the B wave and the uh, C wave is over here. I actually put them all in my list. So, so this is the recon tab. And uh, also other, well, I guess in terms of uh, explaining to you the UI, uh, what you should know is that uh, over here, that's the unit price, so 25. And here you have a number four. The number four is to indicate you the amount of unit you'll get. And uh, one thing you might notice, for example, here you have an M8, uh, which you can call in wave A, and there's no multiplier. so. Well, here you have wave B, and here you have wave C. So you can get uh, more of them as the uh, wave goes by. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm starting with infantry recon, and the cheapest one. Actually, it's not even the cheapest one. Uh, what is it? Uh, this is, which version is it? Oh yeah, that's the second one. So why am I choosing that over the other one? This one has uh, a rifleman, while this one is mostly SMG. So it's probably a bit better at fighting. Uh, here you have also a M8, which I bring uh, at the beginning because uh, I want to have some armored recon. And you can actually see here in the corner, actually let's do it from here, uh, this uh, vehicle, the M8, as an, uh, an anti-tank uh, capacity of seven. So that's useful to know because if your gun is, is not strong enough to pierce the enemy armor, uh, it won't destroy it. It's uh, that simple. Which means that you probably shall not bring too many of these at the beginning. On the other hand, you might still have a moral effect uh, on the enemy because uh, the enemy doesn't like receiving a lot of fire. All right, so B wave, I bring only one more group uh, of two this time, and then I bring mostly C wave. So 
The way this progress is that with the infantry, I'm able to deploy them into the buildings early on in the battle and uh, recon the area. And uh, also bring some recon uh, vehicle of M M8. And after that, later on, uh, I'll bring only vehicles there. I don't really believe much into the infantry recon at that point, even though you can have probably more here. So I think th this is a kind of logical progression in the battle. So in terms of infantry, so infantry, you have uh, different waves available, of course, same system. And at the beginning, I bring some arm rifle and uh, some uh, arm leader so the arm leader based on what i understand about them they kind of boost the morale of the the troops around them so it's good to have some no matter the wave also what i'm interested in with the arms rifles is that they have an anti-tank capacity which means that early on deploying them into the building allows you to defend yourself against vehicle potentially uh, it's only an, an ap power of four but uh, let's see, does that uh, say anything more specific here? Anti-tank weapon, indicate this unit as a dedicated anti-tank, allowing it to engage armored unit. The breaching symbol indicates a powerful infantry weapon, only useful at close range, but usually with deadly effect. And indicate the remaining ammunition for the weapon against its mix. So you only have four anti-tank. And uh, actually, my impression is that uh, you don't really have AP power here, uh, but you can probably destroy even a, a strong tank with this. The only downside is you probably have a Nemo of four, so probably the trade-off. But I don't think there doesn't seem to be uh, any AP value. Also, you have some infantry here, some. Uh, explosive value i guess uh, this is against infantry mostly you also have range which is a bit limited you need the enemy to get at 200 meter for the anti-tank and 300 meter for uh, the rifle here so that's something to keep in mind so the the fighting in this game really is close order as for the leaders what about them nothing much other than being a unit that boosts the morale i suppose but there isn't much documentation here that tells you that so what i do is i bring these two units and i will garrison them uh, to ensure that i can defend my front line so it's a first wave a wave uh, then second wave, some uh, engineer leader. Uh, these I assume uh, can uh, uh, boost the morale of your troops once again, and uh, also they come with. Uh, I believe this is probably amphibious. Does it say anything about that? Well, actually, it should be. I don't know if it is in the game, but it should be. And uh, what's also interesting is they have TNT, and they can throw that at uh, 100 meter. And they have an explosive value of 20, which is pretty high. So I suppose that if a tank come really nearby or infantry, they can throw that and destroy them. So pretty good defensive unit, I assume. All right, so I'm rifled. And uh, these guys, actually, if you compare them with these guys, they are not really different other than being more numerous. And because that's because uh, in wave B, uh, you get more troops uh, of the type you had access to previously, but in larger numbers. So ultimately uh, you gain at not necessarily uh, bringing a, uh, well actually it doesn't do the gain, but anyway, you get more accessibility to uh, a larger amount of the same troop you had before, but because you wait, well, it, anyway, it's interesting. All right, so another B unit. Uh, this is a machine gun. And uh, you put that into building, they will suppress the infantry. Uh, I'm not too sure if that's a great unit or not. I, haven't, I, haven't, uh, I don't have enough infantry uh, 
fighting going on in my previous games to know their effectiveness. But I suppose this is pretty good to suppress the enemy. Infantry. So, uh, but probably worthless against enemy tank. Here you have some infantry, but this time they actually have a machine gun. And sadly, they actually don't have anti tanks. So perhaps I should think a bit more now. This, this one here have anti tanks. So I guess this is probably the kind of infantry you put into a town, while these guys you put at the edge of a town. That's my uh, interpretation. And by the way, if anything I say in this guide is not right, keep in mind that this is the first guide I do, and the game just came out in beta. So feel free to correct me and please go ahead, tell me. Everything which is wrong, tell me. Okay, so tank. What's special about my tank deck? Uh, well, actually not deck, but here. Actually, I decided to go with the M4A1, which is this tank over here. And uh, get away. There we go. So here you can actually have different approach to this uh, because uh, you can call those M4A1, but you will only have one of them. So you could go with instead the M4A1, but this is a light tank, which is not that powerful in AP. When you look at it, it's uh, 8 AP, a, well, anti-tank uh, gun power, so it's not necessarily good. When you when you look at, for example, this M4, the front armor is 9. Now, we'll probably check in a future guide uh, what are the values for German armor, but uh, that tells you that the M5A1 will not be even able to beat the Sherman with its cannon. But you can have five of them. Which means that if you were to flank a Sherman, which you probably won't do in this game, but still, uh, you could have a chance to destroy it. So if you are the type to make big charge with a large amount of tank you, and you're actually able to maneuver, Having a lot of uh, those M5A1 can be a really good idea. It can be very effective. But in my case, because uh, this is this just came out and I'm playing, I have played against computer. Uh, well, I think having a stronger tank at the beginning, even though you have less of them, is uh, a good idea. That's for wave A. Wave B. Uh, I'm bringing more uh, M4A1, but commander version, so I guess they boost the morale. I'm also bringing uh, uh, M4A3 uh, 75W, which is uh, a bit stronger, 11 AP. Let's compare that with the other one. This one is 10, and this one is 10. So this one has a bit more punch, but not that much more. And in terms of armor, you have 11 armor, and here 9 armor, and here 9 armor. Also, what you should look at is the experience, the two star above. Uh, for example, this one, because this is a wave 2 of uh, similar tank as the first wave you brought, uh, they have more experience, and you have more of them and uh, that make them interesting well here because this is a new tank you have less experience so this is something to keep in mind and here i also bring well in wave b i bring uh, those uh, two version of the m4 and also bring the jumbo which uh, if you look at it 21 frontal armor that make them very good probably f for that B wave because uh, the German will likely bring a pretty good tank, but the jumbo will allow you to survive more. And using them in a combination with the uh, two previous Sherman uh, make this a very effective uh, war machine. Now the issue of bringing a jumbo at wave two is you only have one of them, so you really need to combine it with your M4, uh, A3 and uh, A1. 
Okay, so wave C. Uh, wave C, I bring more jumbo because really their front armor is really good. And this time, because it's a wave uh, C, uh, we get two, two of them. And then I bring the M4A376W, which is much uh, better with the 13 AP power. The front armor is still a bit weak, uh, but you get three of them. So if you combine those two jumbo with a large amount of M4A3, you start having a really good firepower and you'll be able to potentially overwhelm the enemy. And I think this is really uh, the way the game is designed is that you'll use your jumbo to just attract the fire and you'll use your 76 to kill the heavy tank. So this is for the tank aspect of things. Uh, in terms of support, support are like heavy guns, which are good to destroy building, I suppose, and uh, suppress enemy infantry and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's overall... Uh, well, I don't have enough experience yet to tell you if they're that great against specific unit, but this is clearly uh, aimed at destroying um, personnel. So you can see here the high explosive value is... Uh, uh, mean that it's an anti-personal unit and uh, same here with flamethrower actually do you have still high explosive value so this the flamethrower is anti-personal i i don't know if it has uh, any value against armor it is greatly reduced by armor so i guess uh, you have an HE value of uh, 12 and uh, if you fire at uh, a vehicle uh, which has less armor than 12 you, you probably can destroy it or damage it but other than that not sure time will tell and if you know the answer tell in the comments and here you have another um, Sherman with the uh, 14 HE power, which is pretty good. Still, uh, I guess, specialize against infantry and building. Probably the kind of unit that you will use uh, to clear a town. Okay, anti tank gun. Here you have the M5 guns, uh, 57 millimeter. Probably really good. Uh, yeah, 11 AP power is a good value. And uh, I bring three of them at the beginning. And after that, for the B wave and C wave, I only bring 76 millimeter because I assume that the German will bring much heavier tanks. So this is really the kind of thing that, well, anti-tank, the M5, you deploy this uh, at the beginning, early on, but you will have to rely on better guns for later on in the game. So it's like, yeah, uh, that's why I only bring one of uh, the wave a and after that I continue developing better guns for later wave. I guess it can be good against infinite. Alright, so anti-air. Well the anti-air is a big uh, question mark for me at the moment, but uh, they seem very effective at chasing the enemy away. Uh, but uh, so far not that much air action at the beginning from the game I had so I bring the most basic anti-air uh, one thing which might be uh, useful to talk about is uh, the fact that it's actually really good against infantry and stunning vehicle so this is a good suppression unit uh, against air but also ground unit and here a bit of a better gun uh, as HE power of 21 that's really good And uh, here, later wave, I still bring more of these. Now, you could potentially bring uh, a Bofar, but the Bofar requires you to deploy it on the ground. I guess uh, this is a, uh, an okay uh, HE uh, capacity. Uh, I suppose the rate of fire is probably the interest, or is it? No, nah, it's pretty similar. So my impression is that the Bofar 
can be good, but you pro you are probably better with uh, the vehicle anti-air. I'm just comparing the different ones because the vehicle anti-air will shoot on the road uh, as well, which is not ideal probably because there's probably a, a disadvantage at moving and shooting at the same time. Okay, artillery. Well, I'm I'm not a huge user of artillery, but uh, so that's why what I'm putting here is really up to you. At the beginning, I think uh, infantry mortar can be interesting, but uh, I think uh, having the abstract mortar is probably more interesting. And then later on, uh, having real artillery like uh, the M7 is probably a smart idea. If you want a bit more protection, having the uh, M4A1 OP might be a, a good idea if you'd like to keep your artillery closer. But uh, personally, I think yeah, artillery is something you keep in the back. You can also bring uh, Calliope here at wave B, or I think uh, yeah, here you can uh, bring more at wave C. Calliope is actually. Uh, it's good at stunning the enemy, but I'm not sure if it's good at uh, destroying them. Let's compare this and this. Third D. Here, the Calliope has 30 high explosive value, which is okay. Uh, While well, the M7 has. Okay, so you have more destruction power with uh, the Calliope. So that might be a better idea, but my impression is that it likely uh, uh, it likely uh, let's say take more supply, which is a good question here. I did not bring any supply. I pr I guess I should probably switch this for a supply vehicle, like this. There we go. Or actually, in a, at wave B, I'll bring supply trucks. Five of them, and that should be enough. Okay, and uh, here, what's interesting here is this is a unit which is an artillery observer. This unit is a uh, forward observer commanding a smart fire mission. It can call in a powerful strike in its vicinity. Vic vicinity? Yeah. Anyway, uh, by the mission parameter. So that can be an interesting thing to try. I think I will ditch this for this. And we'll see. Okay, yeah, this thing calls a battery. So this is a tank which has a capacity to call artillery. Worth trying. Air Force. Uh, this is. Uh, well, Air Force, here you have different recons. So if you like uh, hair recons, that's a good idea to have. And this one actually, Rosie, has uh, rockets. So this is a recon which you can use to actually attack the enemy. Early on in the game, it can be an advantage to attack. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure if in the long run uh, that will last because they will bring anti-air for sure. And these uh, planes are a bit weak. Anyway, P-38 Lightning, uh, this is uh, a plane which I find useful because it fires rockets, so I bring this on wave B because I don't assume much of a fight in the air with uh, wave A. I also bring uh, the Thunderbolt uh, for wave B because Thunderbolt used to be a good fighter and this one even has rockets, so I'm not sure if it's a better fighter than uh, this one for example. The Mustang is specialized fighter so it might be a better fighter but when you look at it uh, this thing has much more firepower so I'm not too sure the difference and the Thunderbolt go faster optic normal. Well, I guess the Mustang might have a better optic agility medium while well, Mustang is faster. So I guess Perhaps the Mustang is a better fighter, but most of the action will likely be air to ground for that plane and with the air to air capacity. And anyway, you kind of 
bring that plane above your area and your anti-air L power. Here you have another type of uh, P38 lighting, and this one has bumps. So mostly an air-to-ground focus in that B wave and C wave in my case. So this is uh, my guide for uh, the armor deck, and of course, uh, if I figure out that I'm super wrong about what I just explained to you, I will likely do another deck or battle group. I need to correct myself there, uh, where I will probably make a better deck. But uh, from my understanding of the game so far, I think this deck should be pretty good for at least a skirmish against computer and perhaps against uh, human as well. So we'll give that a try. Yeah following this. So now what I'll do is uh, I will record a battle and um, which will be posted separately from this and uh, you'll be able to see this deck in action. So I'll see you there. I'll point out in the description down below. <laughs> 